welcome to my workshop. I'm now going to show you how to upholster a settee. The principles which I'm going to be showing you are exactly the same whether you're doing a settee or a single chair. It doesn't matter. What we're going to be doing is doing traditional upholstery in a traditional manner using traditional tools. Now traditional upholstery is a bit like building a house. You go through layer by layer, slowly building it up. So you start with the foundations, and the foundations of all traditional upholstery is to start with the webbing. We're going to put webbing in this direction, and we're also going to put webbing in that direction. We're going to weave it all together, and it all helps to support each other. Now this is two inch wide webbing, and I'm going to be putting it at six inch centres. So if you like to work in metric, it's 50 millimetre webbing, and it's 150 millimetre centres. So I've marked the frame where I want to put the centre of the webbing, and I've attached it at the back. Now we need to get this webbing nice and tight. So we're going to use what's known as a webbing stretcher, which is a tool like this. And you stick the webbing through, drop the little down in, get it nice and tight. And then you're ready to actually tighten that. Now I'm using a, an upholsterer's hammer here, which makes your life considerably easier because it's magnetised. Three tacks in a triangular pattern. And I always work exactly the same way. In the, on the first time I do it, I have the two tacks facing out and a single tack in the middle. And what we do is cut off our webbing and now I put some more tacks in this time same triangular pattern but with the single tack at this side and the two tack and that way I'm never in danger of trying to get a tack on top of a tack So that's all the webbing straps put on going in that direction. So now we're going to repeat the process, but this time going across. And we're going to be weaving it in and out, over and under. We're going to use exactly the same triangular pattern with the tacks. And we use the same technique with the webbing stretcher, you want to get it nice and tight. This is all about building the foundations. Well, that's all the webbing done. So as you can see, I've got nice firm webbing on the seat, on the back, and I've also put a little bit on the sides to support it. Now the next job is we're going to start covering the back and the sides with some hessian. I've got some here which I've cut to size. So I've stretched our piece of hessian out across the back and I'm just going to put a few tacks in place. So we get the hessian in place and we stretch it nice and tight. And we'll put a tack in there and we'll do one this end as well. These are double cone springs. The one on the right is a six inch spring and it's a nine gauge. This one here, this is a four inch spring and it's 12 gauge. 
So the lower the number, the thicker the spring. So what you're going to do is use thick springs to go on the bottom of this chair, because that's where all the weight is going to be. The lighter gauge springs, if we wanted to, we could have put them on the back of the chair, though on this chair we're not going to do it, because they don't take a lot of weight, because that's what you're pushing your back against, it's not your full body weight. So, for the purposes of this settee, we're going to be using 6 inch springs, and we want the heavy, which is the 9 gauge springs. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew one of these springs to everywhere where the webbing meets. So we've got five springs that way, we've got 11 rows of webbing that way, so if my mathematics is correct, we're going to need 55 springs in order to do that. I'll put a couple of stitches in four places just to stop it going anywhere. You could probably get away with as few as 25 or 30 springs, uh, but the more springs you put in, the more comfortable it is. Think back to the last time you tried to buy yourself a mattress, and one of the selling points is the more springs that's in the mattress, the better it is. Well, it's exactly the same in something like this. So I've sewn 55 springs in, and it's all sewn in down at the webbing. So the next step is we're going to start joining them all together this way. So the first thing we do is we put a row of tacks at the end of each piece of webbing, front and back, and at both ends. So the next job is to lace the springs in. So we start with a piece of number six twine, and I like to start in the middle, and we just Tie that in, and we go from there onto the next spring, and we tie that in as well, onto the next spring, and we tie that one. And then we get the spacing, and then we go off the end of the spring. and down to the tack. Now at the moment I'm not going to tie onto the tack because I want to get the spacing sorted. And as you can see, what I'm starting to do is that the springs will now hold themselves firmly in place and we'll go across and we'll do every single row in this direction and then we'll do every single row in that direction. So now we've got all our springs tied down in place and the first covering we're going to use is this particular fabric here and what it is it's a felt which has been bonded onto a backing and that goes the first covering over the top of our springs and that just gives you a little bit of easy padding. The next layer is going to be hessian. So there you are, our first proper chance to sit on the settee. We put webbing everywhere, we've now covered it with hessian, we've got the springs on the seat and we've got the first layer of stuffing on the seat as well. And as you can see, it fits me quite nicely. It's perhaps a little bit low in the leg, but that's all right because we've still got quite a bit of stuffing to come in here. It's a little bit long in the back, but that's all right because we've got all this stuffing to come behind. But the main dimensions are right. It fits me nicely in the leg this way. It fits me nicely in the back there. And it supports my head absolutely beautifully. So if you don't mind, I think I'm going to have my first sleep.